I mean, it's eight pieces and a pipe. How difficult can it be? Perhaps some good has come from all of it. The Republic couldn't have asked for better soldiers. Nor I a better friend. Hello again, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to Printed Props Workshop. Today, we're going to be starting something a little bit different. We're going to be doing a multi-part series for the next maybe three weeks where I'm going to be building a commission for a customer that is a Captain Rex 501st Black Series armor stand. So the customer has the Black Series helmet already, but he'd like to get an armor stand to put everything onto to display it. So he commissioned me to create the pieces for him. And we're gonna go through the whole process from starting to print, through assembly, all the way into weathering, and then finally getting the piece out. It's going to be, as I say, maybe three parts, maybe four parts. We'll see how it goes in the end. Part one, which is obviously this part, is going to cover the initial parts, printing for the shoulder pauldrons, the chest plate, and the back plate. Part two, we're gonna focus on the, cl the cloth section of the Under Armour, and then more onto the back plate and the chest plate and the pauldrons. And then finally, part three will be the weathering stage and final assemblies. Now, because it was a piece that I was shipping out, I couldn't glue it all together in the end. So what we're gonna see in the final assemb assembly and display stage is that it's not actually glued together, it's just displayed. So obviously take that into account. But for now, I'm gonna stop talking because we've got a lot to cover in this one. So let's hit those time lapses and let's get to it. Editing Stu jumping in here quickly right at the end of the time lapses. The next section there was a few parts where the wind was causing the audio to peak. So you may notice the volume levels jumping around a bit as I've tried to clean it up. I've done my best so I apologise if it's a little off at times. We have the first pieces here that I've already done. And these were, I coated these inside earlier because it was snowing and I just wanted to get the first set of filler primer on. So these are the pauldrons that we're doing for the commission. And as I say, these have had one coat of filler primer so far. So I'm just gonna sand over them to get started. I'm outside, so I'm not wearing a mask. I probably should be, honestly, and I'm sure that someone's gonna tell me that I really should be wearing a mask. Um, I just kind of look at it in the sense that I'm well ventilated so I'm probably going to be okay. If I was doing like resin painting or anything like that then yeah absolutely I've got a mask or if I'm doing um, resin sanding definitely have a mask for that. I do not want resin dust in my lungs to be honest. So this is just really as I say the first coat of this to see how much work we're going to need to do on it. These came off my bamboo, so these were pretty smooth already, as you can see. But we have the 
we have the layer lines we have to basically work out in this so I'm just starting with a 200 what is it 220 grit I think which is pretty high but I'm just trying to see how smooth it'll come out without me having to do a lot of work right now and if I need to scale the sandpapers back I will absolutely scale the sandpapers back and we'll start working with like the 80s and the 100s and things like that but we'll see because it's already looking pretty promising just off the back off the back of a 220 and these these were already very smooth so I didn't worry about coating these with a filler primer I just sanded these down bare um, and left it at that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this with some more filler primer, primarily over the dome where you can see the most layer lines and then we'll come back to this piece in a little bit once it's dried and we'll do some more. Now again, probably but as I said in the previous video, the spools I use pretty much solely for painting on because it's, it's a good painting platform and as you can see my painting table it's a little bit rough it's got a few hundred layers of paint on it at this point so all I'm doing with this is just a flat grey primer this is not filler primer like the other one this is what I'm using for the majority of the armor which is Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 filler primer. It's automotive primer basically and it's great for armor because it just kind of gets into the layer lines and things like that and just just kind of soaks in there fills them in a bit and we can move on better with sanding from there or alternatively if I didn't want to use this I could use resin painting which does exactly the same thing fills in the layer lines and everything else and really avoids the need for filler primer at that point you can just sand down the resin layer with a mask on obviously and then you can move straight on to the normal primer the final piece that we're doing right now because it's bloody cold out here is the chest plate and I had a couple of little spots in the chest plate where I had to um, I had to add some filler because honestly the original design had some gaps in it here and there so we uh, we had to work around those this is obviously going to need a lot more filler primer because just by doing a bit of basic sanding you can see all the layer lines here and that's because this was done on my 0.6 nozzle as opposed to a 0.4 nozzle so the nozzle size and the bigger layer height means that it's a little more noticeable so all i'm doing right now is a little bit of pre-sanding just to just to kind of take some of the bring it a little smoother and take some of the layer lines out before we get started so at this point I've been doing this for about three years and throughout that time I've got used to doing it in all weathers but winter is definitely the worst time to have to do commissions or any pieces because it's so cold that you start to go numb very quickly okay this has got me a good starting a good starting place anyway just just getting the basic sanding down a bit and getting it going because now I'm gonna fill a prime now I'm gonna fill a prime this whole thing and we'll move from there seriously though if you've never tried automotive filler primer when it comes to 
coating 3D printed items for painting. Just pick a can up, they're about six or seven dollars a can, and they're an absolute game changer if you're willing to put the time into sand. There we go. So that's a good starting point for this for this uh, plate. We have the first set done. I can see a pretty large amount of layer lines in it, so it's definitely going to need a lot of sanding. But it'll look great when it's done and I hope that my customer is happy with it. So now we're going to come back and we're going to do a little more sanding. I've broken out the lower grit sandpaper now from using some of the one from my mouse sander that's broken just to try and get rid of some of these layer lines here. So if we can get rid of these we can move on with this pretty quickly. So really what we've got to focus on is this section here where the layer lines are thicker because that's going to be highly visible. So we've got to take this down and then sand it with lower grit sandpaper afterwards to really get it taken care of. So I'm going to do that quickly now. This is 180 grit, so we're moving up 100 grit now. Fill a sander on that. Fill a primer even, sorry. It will be enough to pretty much bring that down to next to nothing. And maybe just need a little bit more sanding after the next coat and we'll be good. Because it's nearly there. As much as I'll say that I'm nearly there, or it's looking good, or I think that it might need one more coat, it always needed more. It was very frustrating that I would sand. I would get everything sanded down. It would look really smooth. It would look absolutely perfect. And then as soon as I put the next, next coat of paint on to see how it was going to look, I would start to see problems again. The amount of times I put flat grey primer on and then had to recoat it with automotive primer afterwards for a little bit more was very frustrating. It's been pretty good, honestly. I think we're nearly there. Maybe one more, one more zap with a filler primer and it'll be good to go. This, um, this, this needs some help, but we'll, again, trust in the process, as they say, trust in the process. So the reason why the chest plate needed a lot more work than the pauldrons was that the chest plate was printed on my Voron printer. That printer I use a 0.6 nozzle and a 0.3 layer height, which is because I'm printing these pieces in one piece, so I want them nice and strong. This is coming across pretty good so far. Now a common misconception in 3D printing with a lot of people is that infill equals strength, which it really doesn't. You can have something with a 70% infill, but if it only has what they, what's referred to as two or three outer walls, then it's going to be very, very weak overall. Now with my Voron with a 0.6 nozzle, the 0.3 layer height, I have it's set to have six outer walls and very low infill, like 5% infill. So these things are really strong without using tons and tons and tons of filament. But obviously the downside is at 0.3 layer height, you have some rough edges to clean off. So 
So again, here we go. This is coat number three for these. It'll be coat number two for the chest plate. Okay, so that's another coat down. When it's wet, I can definitely see some layer lines still in the chest plate that I'm gonna need working on. And I can see a couple in the shoulder pauldron still. So we've still got some work to do, but again, early days right now. So this has had about five rounds of sanding and filling at this point. And as you can see, we've got it pretty, pretty good now. It's down, it's much, much, much smoother. And we've got a lot of the layer lines out of it and pretty much all the layer lines out of it at this point. And I'm gonna be doing the first white coat on it very soon, probably gonna give it one more quick sanding with a high grit just to um, clean it up a little bit more. And then we'll be pretty much ready to go with the white paint well first of all i'm gonna to have to mask it off and do the blue strip down the middle before i do the white paint so there we go that's part one of this whole thing pretty much in the books we have a lot to cover in part two we have the chest plate and the back plate to cover in a lot more detail not Everything goes to plan with those, so um, obviously look out for that. We've got a lot of corrections to be dealing with in places when it comes to those as well. And then a lot of other hiccups along the way. So look out for that. That'll be out next week. And until that point, thank you for sticking around and may the force be with you.